Ha, ha, ha. What's happening, y'all, man? What's going on? Of course, this is your boy, C. Wells, uh, your tour guide around the SWAC. This is SWAC Talk, the show we cover the SWAC inside and out. And it's it's almost football season. Hell, I'm going to say it's football season now, man, um, because I'm starting my season previews uh, with the Alabama and them Bulldogs. And this Thursday is media day. So uh, put two and two together, man. You know, we are on, you know, we're in the middle of July. Uh, week zero starts in August at the end of August. So, you know, camps will be opening up in a, in a little while. So it, it's football season now, man. You know, I mean, yes, it's still talking season, but it's football season now. And um, we're going to start off with our um, Alabama and m recap. We're going to um, talk about, you know, how last season went for the Bulldogs, you know, and all of that. And then we're going to talk about, you know, what what I expect from them this season and, and, and all of that. So, um, as far as everything else goes, man, you can check out the socials. They're on the screen. You know, you can check those out. Facebook is Swag Talk, Instagram is Swag Talk, Twitter is Swag Talk 76. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel um, if you haven't done so already. Uh, make sure you like the videos and share them. And feel free to comment. And, um, you know, the whole nine, man, just, you know, enjoy yourself. And um, <laughs> let's let's get to it, man. I don't even feel like wasting no time. Let's get to it. Uh, let's, let's run through. The uh, 2021 season for the Bulldogs, um, of course, in the spring of 2021, they won the SWAC championship. Um, they won that spring season. And coming into the next, um, coming into the fall, there were high hopes for this team. Um, they were led by Akil Glass, who obviously is one of the better quarterbacks to ever come out of the conference. Um, defensively, they had they you know were expected to fill some holes, and you know they were um, gonna find their way. But, you know, this season didn't necessarily go their way. The defense never really came together um, offensively. They, you know, they were pretty much your typical Alabama in offense. But, you know, defensively, they, they just never really could come together. And they had a, a rough middle of the season stretch that kind of knocked them out of contention. And then, you know, they, they righted the ship at the end. But defensively, like I said, they just could not stop anybody. And we'll, you know, take a real quick look at how they, how they fared last season. Uh, they opened up the season lose, beating South Carolina State 42 to 41. Uh, they beat Bethune Cookman 30 to 27. They beat Tuskegee 45 35. They lost to Gramlin 37 to 28. Uh, they lost to Jackson State 61 to 15. Uh, they lost to FAMU 35 31. They beat Alabama State 42 28. They beat Valley 42 14. They beat Texas Southern 52 to 49. They beat Pine Bluff 52 to 24. And that closes out their season. They finished out the season at seven and three and um five and three in conference. So as you can see, defensively, they just did not stop anybody hardly. Um, they gave up a ton of points throughout the season. Um, looking at this team statistically, they led the conference in scoring um at 30 37.9 points per game. Uh defensively, they were ninth, they allowed 35.1. So they were, you know, they were going to have shootouts. <laughs> they were guaranteed to have shootouts the way that defense was. They led the league in total offense at 477 yards per game. Uh, they scored a total of 50 touchdowns. Uh, defensively, they were ninth. They allowed 425 yards per game, and they uh, allowed 45 touchdowns. The Bulldogs averaged 6.3 yards per play, um, which actually was tied for, com tied for lead in the conference. Uh, defensively, they allowed uh, 6.6 .6 yards per play, which would have been last in the league. Um, that was the most allowed. Uh, rushing offense, they were ninth. They averaged 111 yards per game, 3.5 yards per carry, and 13 touchdowns. Uh, their rushing defense was 11th in the league. They allowed 188 yards per game on the ground, 5.8 yards per play, which was the most in the league. 22 touchdowns allowed on the ground. Uh, passing offense, they led the league at 366 yards per game, uh, 37 touchdowns and nine interceptions, completing 62% of their passes. Uh, defensively, they were ninth in passing at 237 yards per game, 23 touchdowns allowed and eight interceptions. Opponents completed 55% of their passes. They led the league in offensive, offensive passing efficiency with a rating of 157.9. Uh, defensively, they were eighth. They were seventh in the league with a rating of 136.4. Uh, 
They uh, they were sixth in the league in kickoff returns at 19 yard average uh, per return. Punt returns they were last. They averaged 1.7 yards per return. So special teams really uh, they didn't really get much out of a return game on either side. Um, they were they were last in kickoffs uh, with an average a net average of 32.8. Uh, they averaged 46.5 yards per kickoff. Um, they had seven touchbacks on the season. Um, let's see, field goals, they were fourth. They were seven and nine on the season for 77% extra points. They were 48 for 48, so they did not miss an extra point. They were the only team, all uh, they were the only team in the conference who did not miss an extra point all year. Uh, punting, they were third. They averaged 35.8 yards per punt net. And 40.8 yards per punt uh, overall. Uh, defensively, they uh, uh, the offense allowed 27 sacks on the season, which was 10th in the league. Uh, you know, quarter the offensive line really has some trouble. Uh, that number is definitely inflated. You know, playing uh, basically Groundland, Jackson State, and FAMU back to back to back. Uh, they gave up a lot of sacks in those games. Uh, the defense had 13 sacks, which was 11th, uh, that was the second fewest in the league. Uh, they did not generate much pressure on quarterbacks, and you know they allowed way too much pressure on their quarterback. They were seventh in the league in interceptions with eight on the season. Third, uh, first downs, they led the league with 25.4 first downs per game, 254 total first downs. Their opponents, um, the opponents averaged 19 and a half first downs per game, 195. That was seventh in the league. Third down conversions, they were second at 40%, 55 of 135. Uh, the opponents were uh, 37% on third downs. That was good for fifth in the league. So they did not do a bad job on third downs. Um, to say that they, you know, they gave up a, a, a ton of points um, and a ton of yardage, they did a decent job. Getting off the field on third down, they just, you know, they just got hit with big plays um, <laughs> on other downs. Uh, fourth down conversion, they were 65% on the season, 17 or 26. Uh, the opponents were 47%, uh, 11 or 23. That was eighth place. Uh, penalties, they were, uh, they they averaged 71.1%. 71.7 yards per game in penalties. They had 80 penalties on the season. That was 10th in the league. Uh, the opponents were penalized 93.4 yards per game. Uh, they had 92 total penalties. Uh, red zone offense, they were first in the league at 85% um, in the red zone. Uh, 42 of 49, they had 37 red zone touchdowns, which was the most by seven touchdowns over the next team. Uh, they were five or six on field goals. Uh, they threw 26 touchdowns in the red zone to 11 rushes. Uh, they had one turnover in the red zone and uh, lost the ball and downs three times in the red zone. Defensively, they were ninth in red zone efficiency. Opponents 85% in the red zone, 35 or 41. The opponents scored 28, 28 touchdowns in the red zone, 15 rushing and 13 passing, uh, seven or seven on field goals. Opponents turned the ball over three times in the red zone, plus one on downs. So defensively, they just, you know, they could not get out of their own way. You know, and they brought in a lot of guys last season to kind of spice up the defense, but it just never went, never really went their way. Um, they did have the league's leading rusher in the season, uh, Garrett Quarles. He, well, he was the second leading rusher. Um, he averaged um, – 95 yards per game, 955 yards, uh, 10 touchdowns, 4.7 yards per carry on 205 carries. Of course, Akil Glass was everything that, you know, even with the season, he still had a, a really good season, 259 of 414, 62% uh, completion, 33,568 yards, 36 touchdowns and seven interceptions. Uh, Abdul Fatah Ibrahim. Uh, the All-American receiver, All-Conference guy, 67 catches, 1,008 yards, 15 yards per catch, eight touchdowns, 100 yards per game. Uh, Odu Hilaire, 
71 catches, 918 yards, 12.9 yards per catch, nine touchdowns. Uh, D. Anderson, 33 catches, 493 yards, 14.9 yards per catch, 12 touchdowns. Uh, Zay Moore, 21 catches, 391 yards, 18.6 yards per catch, two touchdowns. Uh, Garrett Quarles, 15 catches, 221 yards, 14 yards per catch, one touchdown. Uh, Kendrick, um, Brian Jenkins, 15 catches, 221 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Kendrick Jones, 14 catches, 208 yards, and two touchdowns defensively. Uh, Amani Holloway was the leading tackler with 43. Um, Braun McNeil had 38. Philip Hopkins had 37. Brandon Bailey had 31. Chanel Troutman, 31. Troutman led the team with six and a half tackles for loss. Uh, Austin, Breon Austin, five and a half tackles for loss. Philip Hopkins, five sacks. Philip Hopkins led the team with two and a half sacks, along with Dre Carter with two and a half. Breon Austin with two uh, interceptions. Troutman had three interceptions to lead the team, followed by uh, six other guys with one apiece. Uh, special teams, uh, Troy Lind Lindvey was the leading punter. He had uh, 34 punts, 1,398 yards. He averaged 41 yards per punt at a long of 65. Spencer Corey was the field goal kicker. He was 7 of 9 um, with a long of 43 on the season. And, of course, they were perfect on extra points. Um, return game, Odu Hilaire was the punt returner, 11 returns, 2.2 yards per return. Uh, kickoffs, Terrell Gardner, 12 returns, 272 yards. and um, Cameron Young, 11 returns, 220 yards. So basically, like I said, offensively, this team was everything that you would expect from an Alabama and them offense. I mean, they had a great running back in Garrett Quarles. They had tons of receivers. They had a big-time quarterback. And defensively, they just could not stop anybody. You know, they gave up a gang of points throughout the season. I mean, they gave up 35 points per game, scoring 37. So, you know, you really, you know, you really can't win a lot of games like that. And 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 in your biggest game, your offense got shut down and your defense gave up a they gave up a lot of points. And you got blowed out at home on your homecoming. And that kind of turned your season upside down. Um you had a fourth quarter or a second half collapse against FAMU. Uh you righted the ship in your last, in the next couple of games, but by then it was a little too late. Um, and this season was just one that just never really got going. And that led to a lot of, you know, a lot of numbers being thrown at, at, at everything in this upcoming, for this upcoming season. I mean, they, they, on signing day, they signed 38 guys. Um, a lot of those guys were portal guys, um, a lot of defensive guys. They also brought in, you know, some other defensive guys um, in, in the portal after signing day. Um, one big name is the Gabriel Floyd. He was a former four-star linebacker from Texas. Um, he's a guy that they, they really counting on to toughen up this defense. I mean, they, you know, they got pushed around a lot. Um, he's a guy who, you know, he, he's hungry to play and he's ready to play. And I think he can help lead this team. Um, they, like I said, they, they brought in a couple other, you know, big 10 guys on the defensive side of the ball. Um, Offensively, you know, quarterback is where it starts and ends. I mean, they have the weapons. I mean, you have, you know, Odu Hilaire. I mean, excuse me, not Odu. You have Odu Hilaire transferred out, but you have uh, uh, Ibrahim, who is a guy who's been starting basically since his freshman season, which he was a walk on. And I mean, he came in and he, he put in work. You got Garrett Quarles returning. Um, you got a guy like Terrell Gardner is there. Uh, Kendrick, John Kendrick Johnson at tight end is also. A guy quarterback is where you, you're going to have to find, you know, find your successor, so to speak. Um, you're not going to replace a guy like Akil Glass, but you definitely need to find a guy that can step up to the plate. And um, Quincy Casey probably is the, the leader at, at this point. Um, Jaron Williams had transferred in, um, but he um, stepped away from football. Um, for mental health reasons, and you know, I totally understand that, and you know, I totally respect that. You know, you need to get yourself self right. You know, first and foremost, um, a late name coming into the quarterback room um, is uh, Karan Taylor. Um, 
he was a uh, transfer from Illinois. Um, so you know he's coming in. Maybe he can step in, step in, step into it and, and make the battle a little bit more. Oh, you got a guy like Xavier Langford who had a really good spring game. So quarterback to me is what quarterback and defense to me are the questions for this team uh, going into the twenty twenty two season. And those are going to be the spots that you need to plug. You you're really going to have to plug those holes and and and, and come up with. Um, Come up with something to to get to get things going because um if you don't, then this offense is really gonna struggle um finding their way. If the defense can't get can't get any stops, then they're gonna find themselves in a in a tough position because you know like I said they just could not make any make any headway on defense. So if the defense continues to struggle um like they did last season in terms of giving up too many points and just not you know, not really getting the crucial stops, then this season is going to be a tough one. Um, the season, the schedule is is tough, especially at, at the start. Um, taking a look at, at the schedule. Um, sorry, that's the wrong. They open up this season um, on Thursday, September 1st uh, at UAB. You know, obviously that's a tough, a tough game, um, especially in the beginning of the season and you're, you're um, kind of trying to figure out, you know, who you are and what you are. Um, so that's a, a really tough outing. Um, you go to Troy uh, September 10th. Um, that's another FBS game. So you, you're looking at an 0-2 start most likely. I mean, you know, uh, barring some, something really coming together, um, you're going to start off 0-2. Um, you're playing Austin P uh, to open up your season at home. That's a tough, a tough matchup. Um, you're, you're honestly really looking at an 0-3 start um, before you play your first before you play your first sweat game, which is um, on the road in Tallahassee against FAMU. So this this season is, is really is really possible that you can start off the season 0-4. Um, if you start off 0-4, then you really are going to have to scramble to to make some headway for the rest of the season. Um, October 1st, you host Bethune Cookman. That's your first home sweat game. Um, that's a, a winnable game. Um, but then Cookman has, you know, has their own questions um, on both sides of the ball. So you were able to win that game last season. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean you're winning this year, but, you know, this is a game that you should be favored going in. Um, if your offense is not clicking at all by this point in the season, then this is going to be a dicey game. You know, if the if the offense can find a way to make some, make some things happen because you, you still have weapons, then you can be competitive in, in in most of these games and your defense can get some timely stops. I don't expect this defense to be a top half of the league defense, but, you know, I mean, if they can, you know, not be the worst scoring defense in the league, then I think they have a really good chance of at least finding a way to scrape out some wins later in the season. Um, like I said, the Grambling game is going to be interesting. They lost at home. They lost on the road to Grambling. Um, this Grambling team, a lot of people are expecting to be better. Um, the offense is probably going to be better. The defense, you know, is going to improve, even though that defense was was underrated last season. They're going to probably be better. That's a tough game at home. Um, you go to uh, Bethune, I mean, excuse me, you go to St. Louis the, the next week to take on UAPB. And um, that's going to, you know, that's going to be a, you know, a game that you need to win. If, if, if there's a game in this stretch um, besides the next game that you need to win, it's this one. Uh, Pine Bluff is definitely going to be an enigma at this point. Uh, we don't know what they have. You know, we don't know, you know, where they're going to be. Um, a lot of people feel like Coach Gamble, you know, is on the hot seat, you know, so they need this game. Um, but Alabama and them needs this game. It's a must-win game for both teams. Um, the Magic City Classic is on October 29th. So they get a bye week in between those two games as usual. And this is a big game. I mean, obviously, you know, it's a big game. They won this game four years in a four times in a row, including twice in 2021. Um, Alabama State has some renewed energy with a new head coach and a new attitude. Um, you know, they could be, you know, on a roll coming into this game. So this can be a, 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 a this can be the game that separates you from finishing maybe third or uh, finishing like fifth. You know, I mean, this, this is, these are the games that you need 
uh, to keep yourself in the top half of the division. Um, it's going to be a tough, a tough affair. Um, I don't know if they can win it, um, but they, you know, they have the edge right now. But you know, you that's the kind of game you throw everything out out the record books. Um, the next game that we have is um, Mississippi Valley. Um, that's a, a road game. A lot of people feel like Valley is going to be a, 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 a dark horse team this year. So if Valley is one of those teams that, you know, people really think has the opportunity to win some games, this is going to be a tough affair. Um, like I said, by this point in the season, you're going to know what Alabama and m is. Um, I don't think the offense is going to be bad at all. I think they're going to be a very good offense. They, they just probably won't be as explosive as they were um, last season for sure. Um, but they'll be a good – I think they'll be offensive. I think they'll be good throughout the season. To me, like I said, as long as the quarterback can, you know, maintain and, and, and not turn the ball over, um, they'll be fine on offense. Uh, defensively is where I'm going to always have my concerns until they can show that they can keep people out of the end zone. That that if they can if the defense can improve, I, I like the chances uh, of being a better team this season. Maybe the record may not show that they're a better team, but they can build on that and, and move forward. But this Valley game is a tough game. Um, a lot of people think Valley is a dark horse to finish in the top half of the conference in the division. So this is one of, another one of those games. Um, so November twelfth, they play Jackson State in in Mobile. You know what? What more needs to be said? JSU bombed them last season. You know they they need to make this game a lot closer than what it was last season. Um, for them to really have any kind of impact on the season, um, Texas Southern's another game that they probably should have lost um, offensively with the offense they had last season. They were able to withstand Texas Southern um, defensively. They need to play a lot better. Uh, Texas Southern's offense is going to be better. Uh, how much their defense is better, that's, that's you know, a question as well. So this could be a shootout type of game. Um, looking at the schedule, basically, there's um, not a lot of wiggle room, man. Like I said, this this season is honestly uh, um, it's going to be a tough season in terms of wins and losses. I really, um, I really, you know, I would feel a whole lot more comfortable if I knew that the defense would be you know, more uh, up up to snuff. Or like I said, we just don't know right now. So um, just looking at the schedule roughly, um, an 0-4 start is very possible. Um, they do have a manageable middle of the season portion, um, although they do have some dicey games, uh, Grambling, Alabama State for sure, maybe Valley. But that middle of the season portion is what's going to make or break them uh, coming off of that early season. So um, closing out with Jackson State and Texas Southern, two teams who, a lot. Well, I mean, JSU is probably the predicted swag champs. Uh, TSU is a team that a lot of people think can win the West Division. So closing out with two teams that can potentially be playing a swag championship, you know, is, is not a recipe for success, especially with that early start. So unless they can steal one of those first games, especially, uh, you know, Fam, you or, or, or Austin P, if they can they can find a way to go two and two in those games then I think they can have a, a, a decent shot at a good season. Um, anything less than that is going to be tough. Um, so I would put my uh, I would put my ceiling for them at um, – I would say my ceiling would be like seven, seven wins. Um, that's a seven and four season. Um, that's, you know – that's, you know, stealing a game early in the season and, and basically kind of running the table on that middle portion and, and you know, trying to knock off one or TSU at or Texas, or Jackson State. Um, so my best, my best, my best case scenario, my ceiling is seven, seven wins. Uh, my worst case scenario, I would say, I would say five. I mean, maybe four if the defense just does not improve. But I think this is going to be a six and five five and six type of team this season um, just because I don't like the beginning of the schedule and I don't like the end of the schedule. Um, the middle is not easy, but the middle is more manageable. Um, I, I don't like those two FBS games back to back, especially with a new, a new quarterback and a defense that's, you know, going to have a lot of new guys out there. 
like I said, they brought in 38 new guys this season. Well, actually more than that now, but a lot of those guys are portal guys, so you're going to need to get them guys some time to work work things out and come together as a unit. Um, defensively, they could not do that last season, so it's going to be a tough a tough, tough road for them. Um, so I, I, I see like a five and six or six and five season, you know, as far as my prediction goes. Um, probably a third or fourth place finish um, in the division, depending on how everything shakes out. Um, four home games on the season. So not a lot of games at home, but they do have um, they do have the bulk of their games in the state of Alabama, so they don't have to travel a lot. Um, they only lead the state uh, three times on the season, so that's at least a good a good thing, you know. Um, most of your home, most of your conference games are in the state of Alabama. That's good. Um, all your non-conference games are in the state of Alabama. You know that's good. So you don't have a lot of travel. Uh, the schedule is manageable in that way. But I just don't like the way it begins and ends. So, like I said, um, I expect the Bulldogs' offense to be pretty good. Maybe not as explosive as they were in, last year. But defensively, they must be better. They need to be a top six defense in the league. Uh, they need to cut their scoring margin down by at least 10 points. Uh, I mean, you know, they giving up 25 points is, is, is enough, I think, to win games. Um, if they give up more than 30 again, the season is not going to turn out good for them. So that's um, that's my Alabama and them preview. Um, stay tuned for our Alabama State preview coming at you. Uh, on our next show, and then we'll just continue to move on from now. So I'm your tour guy, C. Wells, stopping the bus, and um, you guys can hop out, and I hope you enjoy your day. Peace.